Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Strap and Roll MMA podcast. I'm your host, Sky, and we are back. 2023, let's go. I guess, you know, we could take a quick look and at the at last week's card. It was all right. There wasn't nothing crazy that happened. As you can see, he's over here yawning. Sean Strickland versus Imovov. Um, overall, how did you guys feel about the card? I thought it was big mid it was they had some good stuff going on but i didn't care about nobody on the card i didn't give a fuck about nobody on there personally i gave like out of one out of ten i gave it about a six it was whatever uh for me personally i started off trying to watch it ended up being background noise i think for me the most remarkable thing i took out of it is how the fuck does Sean strickland not get knocked out he fights straight up like the fucking dudes from the 1700s, right? <laughs> no no movement at all and just literally does not get knocked out. For me, that was the most intriguing part of the whole card. Facts. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing that I did think, I don't know if y'all watched the Ketlin Vera versus Raquel Pennington, but we got to talk about that real quick because Jason and I was on the phone and like, I, at this point, I need to start calling some female uh, MMA fighters because... <laughs> That a low blow. Did y'all see that? Like, for a knee to the crotch, like women do not have balls. And as a woman, I, listen, there's just a bone there, dude. Like that's, that's like that's if somebody gets hit in the shin, and then yeah, all of a sudden the they're like, "Hey, it hurts." Of course it hurts. Yeah, it of hurts. course it hurts. <laughs> listen, I can't speak on it. I, it. It's weird. I can't speak on it. It's not for me to speak. I just remember watching it in real time going, did they just stop it for a low blow? Oh, I, I've been watching Mixed Martial Arts for 20 years. I've never seen it. <laughs> no, I've seen it a few times, but I, I always say that. I'm like, yo, <laughs> I guess it, it, it hurts, bro. <laughs> yes, of course it hurts. You're being kneed on a bone, but like there's no balls there. Like, yeah. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Let's be but isn't it like used to taking a pounding? I don't know. Bro, why was I about to do that? But I didn't want to. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go there. I wasn't gonna go. I was gonna say that, but I'll let that be your lane, bro. You can handle that. That's all you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. You got that. Town, town. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, you can have all of that. <laughs> oh man, I, I'm telling you. So. You know, that's pretty much what happened. But aside from that, like, I didn't see anything that was like, oh, okay, this is crazy. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think for myself, like, I'd also maybe give it a, yeah, about a six, seven. Like, there were some good fights that happened on there, but, like, eh, I might be being generous. Yeah, same. Uh, what about um, how Son calling out uh, Bucky at the press conference? Oh, yeah. My man called him about 40, 50 bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah, he was big man. I kind of like that shit though. He got he, he showed a little bit of personality. Oh, yeah, so yeah. yeah, I agree. Because uh, I I never even really seen him beforehand, you know. So I was like, when I saw that interview, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my eye on my man. Because yeah, he was ready. He over, <laughs> he over here barking, bro, and he looking like he ready to bite. So shit, <laughs> I want to see that fight now. He said he said rematch me. You a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then Buckley ended up making another video, like a little skit of him on the toilet shitting and like his friend coming in and him like responding back to it. But I mean, it was kind of funny, but it re- it wasn't that funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, you could have saved that. Um, but, you know, this is pay-per-view weekend and I'm absolutely excited because 283 is coming right up. And go. I don't know about y'all, but I'm torn. I'm torn between the main event. Yeah. Glover versus Jamal Hill. Like, it's, I can't actively root against Glover to share. And I like Jamal Hill. Like, especially if y'all watched his um, interview on Ode Osborne's podcast, it was Buckley, Jamal, and Jamal Hill and the Cutman tape. Mm -hmm. That interview was so good. And it really gave me like an insight into like Jamal's mentality in general. But like, go check that out if y'all haven't checked it out. But, it's it's just it's tough. It's it's, it's tough for me. I personally like Jamal Hill as a person because I I follow him on Instagram. And this fool be making funny ass videos all the time. Yeah. He be making them little skits like when you get rocked in a fight. <laughs> he'll mm-hmm. be 
you know, he'll go through it. But yeah, I, I like him and I, I'm going to be rooting for him. I agree. What about you, CJ? Uh, for me, like I told you on TikTok, I think it's it's a win-win for me. Uh, like, I'm a huge Glover fan. He's a vet. Like I always said, I love the best dudes that have been scrapping for a long-ass time. Mm-hmm. And then we got Jamal coming in. He's black, like I said before. So it's win-win. So I'm not mad at who's going to win this fight. Hopefully Glover don't just get his ass knocked straight the fuck out early, early. And it's just a good scrap and the best man win. And they can both just go out heads up high and whoever wins gets the strap and can keep going on. Right. Yeah, I know me for myself. Um, you know, it is one of those things where there is no antagonist protagonist. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I fuck with both of these dudes. But, um, you know, uh, gun to my head, you know, I'm pulling for Glover a little bit more for the simple fact that, you know, this motherfucker's old as shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is it. The Michael Jackson, this is it tour. Where yeah. Jamal Hill, you know, uh, numerous years ahead of him. You know yeah. what I mean? So with that, the pendulum for me is going to swing for the love factor on Glover. Fuck with Jamal, though. Real shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Heavy. Sure. Yep. Now, what's your prediction, though? Who's going to win? <laughs> mm, uh, these are hard for me when it's Jeez. Mm, I'm gonna go with sweet dreams. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna go with him. I think he I think he's gonna get it done. Uh boxing wise. I think if Glover takes him down or something, like he's gonna be fucked. And you know what? Mm. That's my biggest fear. Like, so if I have to go with it, if I like like I uh, I'd have to go with Glover. I have to go with Glover with the asterisk that Hill could pop him with something. Mm-hmm. Like that Johnny that uh Johnny Walker knockout is ridiculous. <laughs> like the way his body like jumped up. That motherfucker like, glitched. <laughs> What's going on with you, bro? <laughs> that, he glitched. But when I think about when I think about Glover getting on top of getting on top of him and potentially doing him the way that he did Anthony Smith. That's scary. That's scary. Like I don't know if y'all remember that Anthony Smith card, not, but he was just down his there. Out. Yeah, it was it was just brutal, you know. And I, I and I don't know if Jamal will be able to really like maneuver and get from up under Glover or you know, uh, yeah. So I, I'd go with Glover. What about you, CJ? And I think like uh, I don't predict do predict. I just go for the people I want to go for. That's why this one's tough. So, mm-hmm. but just seeing it. Uh, Hopefully Glover can pull it out. And the thing I always say too, experience is a bitch. This is a five round fight, and Glover's been in a few. Yeah. And Jamal's he climbed the rankings hella fast. And he's in there kind of early yeah. because Dana threw him in there. And Glover has that experience for a long, long time fighting the top of the top. And I always say that shit. And once, like you said, once he gets on bottom, I think he's gonna learn from the shit he did against Yuri, where he was just giving up position and just staying on top and just pounding his ass out. Pause. Um, it, it, but like I, I always say, it's a fight. We don't never know what's going to happen. Jamal goes in there, socks the nigga one time, and then he's out. Or Glover gets on top of him and grinds him out for five uh, rounds. Pause again. But we shall see. I'm excited. And hopefully, and I love Glover, man. He's super nice. <laughs> super nice guy. Yeah. I think you're Both right of them. Him. Both of them, man. Both of them. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right about him being a veteran. I think Jamal, Jamal Hill's chance would be like a one- a one strike KO type of chance. Mm-hmm. This sense, yeah, I don't, I don't see it happening. What about TJ? Well, with everyone here afraid to make fucking predictions, I, I gonna, did. I said Glover. Well, everyone's kind of like, oh my my my. If you have to twist my arm, then I'll go with this guy. You know, the thing with any fight, there's always okay. Well, this person can win if they inflict their will here. This person can win if they inflict their will here. I'm going to go out and say that Glover gets the job done. Um, I see him as well, not only getting the job done, but getting the finish. I see him tapping out Jamal Hill. Um, I love Jamal Hill. Got nothing but love for him. Um, Yeah, he does have a nuclear option, but I think Glover's been in there enough. He'll avoid the big shots, and he will turn into a wet blanket and then sub him out, let's say, fourth round. Rear naked choke? Hmm. Let's say Twister. Yeah, no, no, no. 
<laughs> I don't even think they big bodies can move that way. <laughs> I, I, I can see, yeah, I could see that happening too. I, I think see, maybe in the third round. I'm sorry, Sky. No, I'm sorry. I, I could see head and arm choke or triangle choke. Yep. Yeah. Or arm bar yeah. or arm bar or yeah. Or yeah. twister. Or twister. Banana splits. <laughs> hey. Uh yeah, so but Glover vs. Jamal, uh yeah, it, it should be a good fight though. I think that at least it will be it'll be better than Jan versus Magomed. We can agree Did on that. Did they fight? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I zoned out. Hashtag Dana White. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, somebody on TikTok was like, that fight was... I dropped a video today and was like, yeah, you know, how that, that fight was a dud. And they were like, that fight was not a dud. I was like, bro, I was there live. And people in the crowd was like, all right, I'm about to go ahead and head out. Like, people <laughs> left. Like, no. Nope. Listen, y'all might have been entertained, but us? Nah. We was like, all right. Yeah, everybody there zoned out. And then the fight, the first of its kind, Davidson Figueredo wow. versus Brandon, the assassin baby Moreno. Fight number Let's four? Go. Yes. A quadruple. I know mm -hmm. four? Run let's, it back, he said. Run let's it back. Go. Uh, you know, of course, Brandon Moreno had to uh earn this title, earn this title fight again by fighting mm -hmm. Kai Car France for the interim. Mm -hmm. Hit him with a nasty liver kick. And right. now we're here in Brazil. The the uh first fight was in Vegas, the second fight was in Phoenix, and the last fight was in Los Angeles. Both crowds were very pro. Mexican, lots of Hispanics in the building. They were going crazy for Moreno. Davidson gets his come home fight as a champion, taking on the Mexican. It's going to be insane in there. Uh, you know, they're going to be doing the Uva on my hair chance. You're going to die. Who do y'all got? <laughs> Don't be shy, Jace. Jay. Mr. Go Jace, Mr. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was the last one to speak, so I let someone else, you know. No, 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 no. We go, you know, snake it around. Bring it okay, back. Okay, here we go. So uh, this is uh, obviously an incredibly hard matchup. You know, you got the, the testicular fortitude of Brandon Moreno just never says die, you know, against the... the the assassin Davidson Figueredo. Um, fuck, man. Like, this is the hardest fight that I think I've had to predict in a long time. Um, so, all you betters out there, I'm not saying go all in, but my prediction is going to be Davidson Figueredo gets it done in front of the Hogan crowd. Split decision? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, I have no, uh, I, I don't have an outcome of how it comes. I'm just going to say, I think Davidson somehow figures out the way to get to death. What about you, CJ? Like I said, I don't predict, but I want motherfucking, uh, Moreno to win. It's cold heart. <laughs> Viva la raza, baby. Hey. <laughs> fuck, fuck Figgy. <laughs> I'm ganging him. <laughs> That's it. That's it. La raza. <laughs> It's going to be a motherfucking banger. It's like like I said, you can put these motherfuckers on 10 out of 10 times and it's going to be the same thing. Bangers after bangers after bangers. This is going to be fun as hell and the crowd's about to be going stupid. I want I want Moreno to win. I want that's plain and simple. Is he going to win? I don't know. <laughs> but Figgy got a chance? Hell yeah. Is it going to be lit as fuck? Hell yeah. I wish this was the main event. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I know they don't give it to the little dudes, but this this fight's going to be going crazy in the crowd. They about, it's about to be fireworks. I agree. Um, let me see. I think I'm gonna go with. Sheesh, I'm gonna go with Brandon Moreno because of his last fight, because he mm -hmm. was taking an ass whooping and did not stop pushing forward. And then look, look at the outcome. Like my, my man, like he said, got testicular forward to this man. You're gonna have to kill him to get him out of there. So, and I, and he just had a fight like not too long ago. So I feel like he's actually yeah. really like prepped for this. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Moreno. Yeah. So the last time Figgy fought was last January. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. 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 Okay. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Real quick. Uh. There's no doubt who I'm going with. My boy. Figueroa. McLovin himself, <laughs> Moreno. I absolutely love Moreno. When he won the second time, when he choked your boy Figgy out, 
the only definitive win that they've had. Yeah. You know, when he choked mm-hmm. him out, I was there in Phoenix. I cried. Even when I see the scene of him winning again, I still get emotional because there was something about it. There was the energy in that crowd to be in front of all those Mexicans and him just it, it was a spectacular moment that I'll never forget. Um, and overall, I like Brandon style. I like his attitude. Um, yeah. I like he's what he brings. Guy. He mm-hmm. is. And then on top of that, Figgy, I know he's already cutting weight. He started cutting weight Saturday. Yeah. Sunday, quick, something like that. Quick timeout. I, I have to ask y'all real fast. Does Figueroa make weight without issue? Without <laughs> issue? No. Because he's a bitch. <laughs> He's a big 125. Does he make weight? Yeah, I think he makes weight. But without issue, he's gonna be, he'd be struggling. <laughs> he'd yeah. be, and the thing is, he's not like a big guy, but he just holds a lot of – he's like yeah. like a spark plug, man. Yeah. So, I don't know. And then Brandon Moreno, I just seen on the, um, on the Embedded or something else, he's like, it's super humid out there. Yeah. So, I think Brandon – Yeah, he, he said he's already ready for his cut. It's already – He's already good. He's sweating and losing weight hella fast, so we shall see. But I think I think Figgy, he'll he's a champ. He'll get it done. I think he's gonna try. Definitely <laughs> gonna try. That um, suck if he don't make it though. Like, well, you know, he hell? didn't make it against Joey B in his first championship fight. Um, he did he did Joey B nasty though. <laughs> He got Joey B out of there. Oh my God. Um, and that says a lot about Brandon, you know, because Joey B was that dude. Like, no, he never won the championship, but he was that dude. He was in the most uh, flyweight title fights, even though he didn't win. But you know what I mean? Like, Brandon got cut twice, able to come back and put on just amazing performances against Figueredo. Um, the the thing is, is that like, how long is Figgy gonna be at one twenty five? Eventually, you know, he's gonna have to move up, especially with these big weight cuts and stuff. Um, and <laughs> that's gonna be know. a tough role for him at one thirty five, though. If you do go up there, yeah, it, it, it's not <laughs> yeah. gonna be fun at all because Hell like, nah. and then even when you start looking at the rankings, like right after that, you know, you got Pantoja. Pantoja's um, a dog. Yeah, Pantoja's a dog, and even uh, Nick Alu. Or however you say his name, Matthias. The, yeah, the one that just beat Matt, Schindler, uh, Matt yeah. Snell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know you got some killers that are coming up through there, and Pantoja has beat uh, Brandon Moreno twice already. <laughs> yep. So it'll be interesting to see what could happen if Brandon does win, having to go up against Pantoja again, whether or not the experience and championship mentality helps him. Um, and then Davison, you know, obviously that'd be a fresh new matchup that we'd be, uh, you know, excited to see. So. Flyweight has some stuff going on that, you know. And real quick, I think the one of the the last reasons why I took Figueredo over Moreno is because I don't think that Brendan Moreno can win a decision in Brazil, in Brazil. against Figueredo. You want to know why? Because those judges value their own lives. So he has to get a finish. He has well, to he's finish done it though. before. He's the only one that's done it. Yep. Yep. And he's lost twice to him, so just saying. No, the first one was a draw. That was a draw. So it's one and one he draw. Also, yeah, yeah. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, looking further down on the card, I was trying to talk to Jace about Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny, and he has no regard for Neil Magny. I don't know why you doing my boy Neil like that. I kind of feel that way too. Though. <laughs> Dang, what y'all doing, Neil, like that? What most, I mean, he's he, he he the cool. most winningest nigga in the in the, he in the division. He, he is. is, but who he been fighting though? Dang, is not like them. The longest one the picture not coming up. Dang. Neil. Because that's how relevant he is. Hi, I'm Neil Magny. I am a doormat for the UFC. Okay, there we go. There we yeah. go. He's a little. F- oh hell. He's like the <laughs> definition of like mid. You know. <laughs> <laughs> It's like when he fights certain Facts. people, I'll, I'll go for him. Because like I said, I'll go for the black fighters. And I'll be like, come on, man. You got to pull through a little bit more. I think Burns. <laughs> and I fuck with Burns heavy, too. The AC Slater of the UFC, bro. <laughs> that dude, he, he, I think he's about to put it on him. Yeah. I think he's about to put it on him. I think Neil Magny might surprise us. I think I think the range might be a problem for Gilbert. We yeah. Don't know. It wasn't that much of a problem for him against Cumshot. Not at all. How tall is he? Cumshot. Who, Burns? 
Oh, come shot at six one, six two. Okay, he's big as hell for that division. Yeah, and Neil's what? Neil six three. With an eighty inch reach advantage. Mm. With no power, you don't have a lot of power. Yeah, but he could coast. He's got as much power as uh, Bilal Muhammad. I didn't see Gilbert get dropped by one too many jabs, my nigga. Hey. Too many jabs. Jabs. <laughs> Gilbert wins by steamroll. Man, long. I think Gilbert's going to win, though, because obviously <laughs> the, the discrepancy in like, who they've been fighting and stuff. But I think I don't think you should count Neil Peggy out, though. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to count him out. I'm not going to count him out. Um, he's out of here. That might be a good little bet to place, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That could be no Magni not surviving the first round. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good bet. <laughs> he makes it out the first. <laughs> he makes Damn it man. out the first. Who, who, who you got, Gilbert? Uh, I'm going to say Gilbert wins, yeah. Yeah, Gilbert. Okay. Scott, who you got? I just, I, you know what? I just want to be controversial. I just want to be controversial. So I'm going to go with Neil. Like, I I have, I, I think Gilbert's going to win, but I just want to be controversial. I'm going to go with Neil. You never know. I, I'm breaking my black rule. I'm going with Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, he, I, that's a wash, man. Fuck. He, he's, he's a black Brazilian, though. Yeah, you need to fight like Not two, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, 283. Uh, you know, we don't need to go down the like, whole card, but there really are some good fights that are happening on here. Hopefully, your through. boy Shogun. Yeah. Hopefully, Shog- this has got to be Shogun's last fight, right? No, they, yeah, they said this is the retirement one. They, it got to be. But they got him fighting a 26-year-old. That's oh, what I'm God. saying. Damn. They couldn't find somebody older than this is this is this is what the UFC does. You know, yeah. they take great great legends of the sport and fucking shove them off a cliff. Hashtag yeah. Cranky Edgar. Yeah, <laughs> throw them to the lions, bro. Like, yes. God, damn. Yes. And in Brazil too. That's horrible. Brutal. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if y'all know who um, Jalton Almeida is, but I he's think a this dog. man. This man. I don't even think he's lost. Let me pull. He's it up. a dog. Like, I don't even think that he has lost in the UFC. So let me go ahead. And, he's super uh, athletic for a heavyweight. Yeah, like he's on a one, two, three. He's, and he's youngest. He's on a twelve fight <laughs> winning streak, uh, three <laughs> fights at the UFC, and your boy, he gets it done. He gets it done. Um, I'm so I think a lot of you. people are sleeping on him. Um. Just because, just like they don't necessarily know him. Like once again, he's back on the prelims, but he's one of them prelim fighters that like really could break through. And mm-hmm. I don't think that we, uh, gotcha. I don't think we talk about him enough. So definitely keep your eye on that fight. Yeah. Like who's seen his opponent and pronounce his name? I don't even. know. I can't even see. <laughs> oh, I have the correct pronunciation. Uh, it's it's pronounced Bob. The uh, ABCDZ is all silent. It's just pronounced Bob. There you go. Yeah. We'll go with that. Um, but yeah, the fight's going to be good. We got two brothers on there. The Bone Feast bon hey, bon brothers. Feast. Yeah. Um, that should be good. They're coming off a of contender series. Another reason to watch contender series. Why do they have Terrence McKinney down here on the early prelims? Barry. The pre- hey, that's He's okay. always low on the, on the, on the Terrence? Party. I'm a I'm a I'm a tune in to those early prelims now. Yo, you got to like Terrence. Why y'all doing Terrence like that? That boy is nasty. <laughs> I don't even make yeah. no sense. And it was pointed Rob- out. Robocop's on this card too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if y'all watch UFC Connected, but check it out. We did a piece on him about like him and his father and stuff. It was pretty moving. Um, but yeah. I'm excited to see him fight because y'all remember he the one that had that nasty. I wonder if the gas <laughs> gonna open back up. Yeah, he had that vagina on his head. <laughs> that was crazy. That shit was nasty, bro. You could see oh, his brain. Fact. That was a, who did he fight? Who? What fight was that? Because he came back and won that. I think it was Chitty. Chitty. I can't pronounce. Oh, his n- last. Then n- n- or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that was a oh, banger. Yeah. Yes, and you was. know, 
I seen somebody on TikTok. I wish I could remember whose page it was. I want. Oh, I think it was High. J Hi High's pick. Yeah. yeah, he posted Terrence McKinney versus Drew Dober's fight. I thought that that was from 2021. I didn't even realize that was last year. So that fight definitely. That was last year. Yeah, that was. Um, I think I seen June of of 2020. There were oh, just man. so. I mean, 2022. There were just so many good comeback fights and so many good fights that last year that we forgot about that. But yeah. like that definitely could have been. Come back of the was, year because yeah 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 mm-hmm. Terrence McKinney one of the fight of the years yeah Terrence McKinney was fucking him up and next thing you know he gasses out and Drew Dober does what Drew Dober does just Super like fans. against Bobby Green just just Super like against fans. Bobby Green <laughs> yes yeah. yeah it's the chin man you got the chin made of stone yeah y- your boys got it on him right. and then looking forward you know over the weekend while those fights were going on. The real information started pouring through. We start hearing about John Jones versus Nganu for the heavyweight title. We're like, hold up, wait a minute, what happened to Francis Nganu? What's going on with that? And sure enough, the madman, John Bones Jones, is back against Cyril Gon. I mean, what more could we have asked for? Sure, we could have got, you know, the monster Nganu versus John, which would have been super intriguing. But for me, stylistically, yep. This is a nasty fight. This yep. is a beautiful fight. This is violence. Like, this is, Cyril to me was what we like. It's like the new style of heavyweights. Like, you have like Tom Aspinall, you have Cyril. Like, you have like, this new style that's not just using brute force, but it's actually like agile and moving around the ring yeah, and using space and timing, footwork. Yep. And now we got John Jones, who we're going to presume that his footwork's going to be, you know, somewhat as good as it was coming up from 205. What, what do you guys have to say about this? So for me, um, I, just to point off you real fast, John Jones actually has pretty terrible footwork. Like he's pretty a standstill person. But not uh, as bad as the heavyweights. Yeah, well, Cyril Gunn, all he does is bounce around. So real quick, I much would have preferred to see John Jones going against the nuclear option, right? Cyril Gunn, for me though, as I think about this fight, worst case scenario for John Jones. Worst case scenario. That's guy who fun. moves, a guy that has power. I'm gonna say it now, early prediction. Cyril gets the job done. Gets mm. the job done and he finishes him. Whoa, Damn. hot take. <laughs> Damn, this man talking bold. <laughs> I mean, it could happen though. It, it could, could happen. happen. You're not wrong. You're not right. We don't know. That motherfucker's two months away. <laughs> Shit. We don't know. Wow. wow. How are you feeling about it, Damien? I think it depends on what do you think John Jones is going to weigh in at? 240. You think 240? Shit. They said he's 250 two right now. I say 250, 255. Hmm. Damn, that's John Jones, but he, this man hasn't been fighting. This man has not been active. This is his first showcase at heavyweight against Cyril Gon. Oh, damn! I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with Cyril Gon. I think I'm gonna go with Gon. Welcome to the winning team. I've been wanting you here, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna slide with that, just because of the it factor of like, we haven't seen this for, we seen Cyril and he been looking great. Here's what so you, I will. You think, you think if he wins, it's like one of those world stopper type of things where everybody's just like, Oh my God. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me tell you why. Like Jason, and I always try to get a baseline. We always use our older brother as like the baseline for casual. Cause he is a casual, like he'll casually watch. He ca- he knows like casual information about, you know, like what an actual casual is, not what like people, yeah. if you don't agree with their opinion on social media, they call you a casual, not that, <laughs> right? Like our brother, <laughs> like if you ask him like, oh, you know, what are some MMA fighters? He'll say Conor McGregor and John Jones. Right. John Jones is one of those people that people know as a casual. If John, and they know, they don't like they don't really know like his one loss. Like they they believe he's undefeated, undisputed, like Chael Sonnen, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't really know. And so if John Jones loses, the world will stop. And if he's knocked out. If he's knocked out. But but I'm looking at it as he's stepping up to take a bigger challenge. 
Mm-hmm. So he has he's putting more of himself on the line versus him defending another title at light heavyweight. If it was a light heavyweight and he got knocked out, then I would say, yeah, that would shock the world. But this, I feel like if he loses, like a split decision, he loses, you know, majority decision, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I just think it's like, okay, now we have something to reference when somebody is going to go up and try to take that title from the from the heavyweights. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that's, for that's me... For me, it's just certain fighters that like I'm not gonna bet against. I'm not gonna. I, I cannot. And one of those people is John Jones. He lost to Dominic Reyes. I don't care what anybody says. He lost. Gustafson I, I don't know. The first time. Yeah, Gustafson the first time. Like there were some of those fights. Like, but even Gustafson was a closer argument than Dominic Reyes. Like that was just like for me. Like, but even at that, we got a new motivated John Jones, so on and so forth. I just think that he's got that dog in him. And as much as I would like to see Cyril Gaon win, I just think John is going to come out and we're going to be like, whoa, you know? But 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 here's the thing. I, I've seen this thing that where they were talking about Allen Iverson, right? If you guys don't know, I'm a big Allen Iverson fan, bigger than a Max Holloway fan, right? It They were talking about how, like, um, no, 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 let's not even use Allen. Let's use Rodman because most people have seen The Last Dance, right? They were talking about how, like, when Rodman wasn't out partying, doing drugs and stuff, like, he'd come in and have a crappy game. Then when he went out, did drugs, was partying, living his best life, he was playing some of his best ball. Mm-hmm. Is this the John Jones effect as well? Like, is is John Jones <laughs> running over pregnant women, doing <laughs> drugs, acting wild? Is, was that the key to his success to be able to go out there and get it done? Like, mm-hmm. can a straight and arrow John Jones do well. Do, do you really think John Jones is on the straight and narrow? I, I don't think he is at all. I don't think he ever will be. You know what I mean? He, here's the main reason why I take Cyril God, right? John Jones has one way to win this fight. Wet blanket. You know what I mean? He didn't have starching knockout power at light heavyweight. How the fuck is he going to do it against a naturally larger man? Who fought Francis Ngannou? <laughs> But y'all are y'all aren't thinking about the fact that he does have the wrestling, and Ngannou was able to take him down and hold him down too easily. <laughs> that was and now easy. we're talking about a, a you know, yeah, a wrestler. But, but that is a two hundred and sixty-five pound cut and weight, you know, silverback gorilla by the name of Francis Ngannou, the predator. Yeah, but not the <laughs> best wrestler. You talking about John Jones, the same man that ragdoll DC, the Olympian. That's facts. I want to see if his cardio holds up in the heavyweight division. Is he going to be active right out, fresh out That's the gate? Or is he going to be kind of just waiting, watching, looking, plotting? We're going to see. That's actually a really good point, cardio, mm-hmm. how it's going to look. Because I know, like, in the beginning stages, looking at Instagram, when he was, like, bulking up, you seen him, and, like, he was on the treadmill and stuff. But, you know, he's been pretty low-key. Um, it's just a fascinating fight to me. I, I um... <sighs> Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can't go against John. I don't even like him like that. I'm not a John Jones fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm a little bit more excited for this fight than it would have been with the Ngannou fight. Because mm-hmm. like I always say, I like fighters who are athletes, and both of these dudes are pretty much just like athletes. Mm-hmm. God, is this probably going to be John's biggest test? And like 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 Jace was saying, like Ngannou probably – was going to probably just knock his head off or whatever like this. I think this is going to be a little bit better of a scrap. They match each other super mm-hmm. well. They both can move. They both, they're both they both big. The striking's going to be on par. John's going to be kicking at his knees. It's, it's, I'm more intrigued for this fight than the Nangano fight. It's going to be a scrap. They're both big, athletic dudes yeah. that are going to be in there moving around. I'm excited to see how John, if he's John's going to knock the ring rust off. Does he have ring rust? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, is he that good that he can just step back in and be the top guy? And it's, it's, you know, I was running back through a lot of the fights from, it's like he has errors. When he first came in, he was young and hungry, and he was just dogging everybody out and just making them look bad. Literally the mm-hmm. legend killer, all the people I love from way back in the day. And then I think he started getting bored when people started to look like him. 
people were looking like him. 6'4", the prototype changed. 6'4", uh, 205, but big, can move around, do the same things he can do. And he was probably like, oh, shit, this is, I'm not into this no more. <laughs> Took that time off and, yeah. you know, now he has to step up again. Is he going to be ready for the challenge? I hope so. I'm, I'm always, I've am always been a John Jones fan. I don't like all the bullshit that comes with him because he could have literally been the greatest combat sports guy ever. Like, I don't ever know. type of thing. Hot take. Hey, hey, hey. Hot take. But all that bullshit, and you can't ride with it. You can't yeah. ride with it. Because it's literally, you know, you have boxing and all this shit, but combat, like, you're in something that you, you're good at wrestling. You're good at boxing. You're good at Muay Thai. You're good at this. Nobody else could step to you. So I'm excited to see if he's up for the challenge. And I'm and like I said, I like Gon too. That's a big fun loving dude. And I I like guys who are just chill, bro. Like yeah. I know you in the fight game, but you can have personality and be a nice guy too. <laughs> Shit. Right. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Poor poor Francis, man. Is it <laughs> it's not poor Francis though. It was his choice. I know, yeah. but I'm saying poor as in I felt like this would have been a good money ma- money back for him and a legacy sealer if he was able to like finish John Jones. Yeah. That's the biggest thing um is that it hurts his legacy. Uh I agree with you there. Be- as Jace is making a face. I-, I really think that it does because at the end of the day, even if he goes and says boxing's t- Tyson Fury or if he goes and fights in one PFL or Bellator whatever those are, at the end of the day, you had the opportunity to fight the greatest of all time, and that fight never happened. So say if you're in PFL or you're in Bellator 1, wherever it is, right? And when it comes down to who's the baddest man on the planet, who's the you know biggest guy, if it's John Jones, if John Jones is the heavyweight champion, who's going to say that, that John Jones, that, that Francis is over John Jones? So let me ask you this. Does it hurt Francis' legacy? And I'm not saying that this is likely, but he goes, boxes Tyson Fury, knights Tyson Fury unconscious. Does that hurt his legacy in any capacity? That doesn't hurt, but... No. That's not that, all. E- that elevates him to a different level of stardomhood, right? In the right. UFC, you only can go right here. You go and beat out the Gypsy King, who me and Sky talked about this, is just the most exciting guy in all of combat sports when you put together what he does in the ring just starching people the fuck out right you put together his his talk the guy has a good chat the guy does fucking karaoke with everyone and then on top of that yeah on top of that the caveat the cherry if you will on top is that he has a redemption story we all love redemption this guy started off really high then got into drugs fucking 500 pounds you know what i mean i'm like 450 so i got something to work with and then comes back and beats a heavyweight champion of the world like sign me up so if anything i would say this can enhance in ganu's um overall legacy if he goes and boxes you know, uh, Tyson Fury, because when you think about if he wins, but even if he has a good showing, right? Because even with McGregor, right? McGregor went from a hardcore to a casual, everyone now knows his name regardless, just sport guys, because he fought Floyd. But when McGregor fought Floyd, he had the UFC backing. There is a, he was, you know, Conor McGregor, there was that backing. Now it's just Francis and Ganu. And also during that time, we didn't have the YouTube boxers. We didn't have Jake Paul out here flatlining MMA legends. So now there's kind of this MMA versus boxing thing that's been taking place. And fans have reached a point of like being like, damn, like they don't want to see boxers beating up MMA guys. When that happened with with uh with Floyd, we didn't we hadn't seen that yet. You know what I mean? So it was like, okay, what's gonna actually happen? Now mm-hmm. we know what happened. We know yeah. nine times out of ten, nine point five times out of ten, the boxer is going to outbox the the mixed martial artist. There's just a different sport. It's a different game, you Agreed. know. And so if Francis goes over there and wins, that's why it's so shocking because like, oh, okay, an MMA guy finally was able to do it. They were finally able to get it done. And if he starches them, I mean, no, who? I mean. The man has crazy, insane power, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so that's why his stock will grow. But if he goes over there and he loses, like, 
It does absolutely nothing. Are you guys going to pay for pay-per-view? Are you guys going to pay $50, $60, $70, $80 to watch Nganu inside one Bellator or PFL? That's the uh, question. Me? Like I told you before, I watch every fucking thing, so that question ain't for me. Yeah, the question's not for you. It's for the people that... It's for the... the, I I hate to say this fucking word, the casual motherfucking people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because... I'm a casual. You a casual. We all motherfucking casuals. Um, they're probably they're, they don't know about one. They're not gonna go. I, I tell people who are, I be on TikTok. People going live. I'm like, bro, one FC's on right now. You guys can go watch it if you're an MMA fan. You should go watch it if you're into like fighting. Like, why wouldn't you go want to watch that shit? It's it's on. Right. You ninety percent of people on this earth got Amazon Prime. You're like, bro, yeah. go watch it. So if Francis go over there, it's just a plus plus for me. Uh, what I was going to say about that legacy stuff, um, legacy don't pay the bills, man. Just being hey. saying, hey, man, you're just the legacy, y'all. You're the, this, that shit don't pay. Bro, go over there and get your ass knocked out by Tyson Perry and get the bag, and then you can retire your whole family forever. Fuck it, man. Let's, this, we trying to get paid out here. People need to get paid. Plain and simple, man. If you're getting peanuts over here and these motherfuckers are going to pay you over here, go get that bag, bro. Plain and simple. Yeah. To do way less work than you're gonna do over here, take your money. I made a post and seeing people are like, uh, "Are you gonna miss Francis?" I'm gonna miss him in the UFC, of course. But man, go get paid. Now, everybody, everybody, go get paid. Him? How you gonna miss him? He he barely been fighting. What you gonna <laughs> miss? Um. No, I know, I know, but I'm saying, I just ran through yesterday, so because I made a TikTok video <laughs> with the uh, voice of men in the background. Mm. Um. But I was going through his fights. I'm like, damn, this dude was knocking motherfuckers straight out. Like, crazy. Was he the did most you... skilled? No. Go ahead, Jay. I was going to say, for the song, did you play Dear Mama or Motown Philly? No, I played It's So Hard. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, uh, but well, what I'm saying is that the deal. to you, brother. The deal was offered to him. It was on the table, ready for him to sign. We don't know if that Tyson Fury deal is available. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't know. Nobody knows. So we don't know where he's going. If he was to fight John Jones and beat John Jones, nigga, legacy pays the bills, nigga. He's that nigga. They're gonna be hitting him up with deals left and right. He beats John Jones, knocks that nigga out. What you mean? That's true. That that comes. But with that a- that's only gonna go so far because how long were they gonna put him on another contract? To well, get paid what eight hundred thousand, a million, two million, so, three million. Then he could have still left and did the other shit. So on the Ariel, uh, on Ariel Hawani show today, they did an exclusive with uh, Nganu today. Francis, yeah, yeah. So basically, on there, they were offering him between the range of eight to ten mil per fight. He wanted a three fight contract. He wanted two of those fights to be against Jones. Obviously, he was assuming that he'd beat Jones and there'd be a rematch or a rematch. whatever the case may be. And then the second one or the other fight with uh, Cyril. Um, so he was going to be getting paid. But his things that he wanted, in case you guys haven't seen the video, he wanted um, health insurance. He wanted sponsorships. And he wanted a fighter advocate to be in and uh, during board meetings and stuff like that. Um, those are things that are just not going to happen within the UFC at this time. That's just a fact. Do you feel, and he was saying that he wanted to be with them. He said that, you know, he didn't expect all the things that he wanted to happen, but he thought maybe he'd get one or two things. And Something he kind of just felt like, like they weren't trying to give him any of that. Um, and that's just the way of the business. Um, so for me, it's like, you know, I hear a lot of people are just like, oh, yeah, Francis is the man, Francis is the man. Hey, you know, it is what it is. The machine keeps moving. The UFC keeps moving. Because well, in the same breath. Show. One monkey don't stop a show, and I mm-hmm. I don't want to use that for to describe a black person. I miss a black person, especially especially <laughs> especially a black person from Africa. Oh yes. my god! I've been saying one fighter don't stop. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So look, I don't want y'all to get carried away with that, but yeah. Hey, but I think you know, we all right though on this one. Somebody yeah. else said, "Fuck y'all." <laughs> Max. Max. You know, and 
So those are the things that he wants. Now, do we want fighters to have health insurance? Absolutely. Do they deserve health insurance? Absolutely. Um, but I just don't see, and this is one thing Jason and I are always going back and forth about. Like, I just don't see a union within the UFC being able to get started because here yeah. you have, say, like the only thing that can happen is if like the champions get together and decide, yo, we not fighting. Like, we not gonna do this. We gonna stand tall. You know what I mean? But, but the way that this promotion is structured, who's gonna stop this person growing up in the favelas in Brazil that's been making a hundred dollars a month? Or you know, a hundred dollars a fight, right? And all of a sudden, you offer me ten thousand U.S. dollars to fight. And then then, that changes their lives. So when we're here, we're like, oh, that's nothing. But when you go over there and you see how these people are living and what's going on over there, you be like, oh hell! Like when you see Charles, like old videos of Charles Oliveira walking through the favelas, like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight for ten thousand. Yeah, because ten thousand gets me from up out of here where they're killing people in the streets, like. It, there's a perspective and a shift that like we don't see because we live here now do they deserve to make more money absolutely everybody i want to make more money y'all want to make more money everybody wants to make more money um but i just think that like those things that he was asking for like they were never going to come to terms with that there was never going to be a deal that was going to be made and i feel like a whole year was completely wasted going back and forth on some bullshit mm-hmm. yep you know what it was you ain't conor mcgregor <laughs> and he not. And you had the lowest selling, uh, he had the lowest selling pay-per-view, pay-per-view. of the year, right? Uh, at around 300K. Now, his thing for that, I remember last year he was saying that he felt like it's because he wasn't promoted and, you know, wasn't being promoted, so on and so forth. Um, do you guys agree with that? I think with that kind of stuff, with the fighters, I think they need to promote themselves. Yeah, Look exactly. what O'Malley does. Look what Izzy yeah. does. You have to go out there and be on YouTube, be on Instagram, get on TikTok, be a personality. People like personality. You know what I'm saying? So you can go out there and promote yourself so people want to see you. And I know it's hard because he doesn't speak uh, you know, English super well, but you can get out there and start doing those little things to show your face more and be out there a little bit more. You have to promote yourself so then the company can start promoting you a little bit more. Uh, I personally think the UFC did not do a great job of promoting him at all. If you think about just some of the most hellacious knockout, I mean, his knockout against Overeem, like, let's just it's pause the best. for a second. <laughs> it's yeah. the best. Like, that is a Pez dispenser. Pez dispenser. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, right? Mm-hmm. All they had to do was play that on a reel continuously and continuously, right? And yeah, we can say that the person must promote themselves, but really, when the engine promotes you, you know what I mean? You get elevated. And my example for that would be Habib. Because Habib had never promoted himself, ever. Barely spoke English. Then the UFC, and obviously with Conor McGregor, right? Just Conor, like you got it. I said, I said, I said with, with Conor, with Conor, but even when Conor was gone, and they still was pumping and pumping and pumping. And all you heard... Conor rub then. And all you hear, though, is about how... Habib is the most dominant fighter ever, the best, the MMA GOAT, right? And that was the narrative that the UFC started putting out there every single time Dana White was doing an interview about it, talking about how great and dominant Habib was. And he should have been doing that about Ngannou. I'm going to push back because if you remember, there was a devastating knockout by your boy Joaquin Buckley that it's actually the most streamed knockout in the world, period. Joaquin <laughs> Buckley, he so with that same That's argument, they tried to push him. They they that they still they still show that fucking knockout every single month. I feel like it's on there, right? And this is spectacular knockout. That still doesn't do enough. Even if you put that on, keep showing it to us. If we don't know who you are, what you're doing, you don't you're not talking. You don't want to be a personality. How? What am I promoting? So my pushback to that is. <laughs> they did promote the fuck out of him. I mean, even his next fight, that's all they talked about. His problem is this motherfucker went on a losing streak after that, right? You still got him. You still got him. But you remember no. when he stood in there and just looked at Derek and, and Dana and them were pissed? Losing a fight and a losing streak are two different things. Well, Correct. Buckley came back and he got a knockout after that, yeah. but then you write too, also. Like, he's just not a high level. He's a good fighter, super good fighter, but. Yeah. 
you can't win win l l l win win l it don't we don't give a fuck what you did bro <laughs> like you're not we're not promoting you for nothing did you just describe <laughs> neil magny <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, why y'all doing Neil? On a quick side note, on a on a quick (laughs) side note, I really do hope the UFC um, fighters get together and unionize. Obviously, the UFC has been throwing shade and litigation and litigation to make sure the fighters don't unionize. You know, I think this will change the entire sport once when the fighters do get unionized, do get an even money or way more of the revenues. Like fighters shouldn't have to argue for insurance. It should be included, especially in something that you're something literally, like that. literally risking your life for. It's without question. It's an abomination on the UFC that they don't have it. And are we going to hold that same standard to Bellator? <laughs> to Bellator PFL one. I would, hope, I would hope so. Because hope so. because they don't, they have, don't it have it either. either. I would hope so. I would hope so. But they don't have the same thing that we're wanting from um, the UFC. So, but they they do have have a little bit more. And you're able to get individual sponsorships. Yep. Yeah, and that's what I was hearing from. um, I don't know who was saying this, but they were talking about uh, from back in the day. They're like, man, I was making a hundred thousand, sixty thousand, seventy thousand to wear all this stuff on my shorts and my walkout gear. I didn't, I didn't. I would take I would the ten and ten, and, and I was and okay. Okay. So, so now they're stuck wearing what? what well, when uh, Reebok came in, in, they were they the fighters. Fighters struggling. One thing that I do want to say about the sponsors uh, thing, right? And I was talking to Jace about this earlier. When it comes to, um, I listen to what Michael Chandler says, right? So Michael Chandler for a while there was the face of Bellator. Um, he was, you know, their big guy that was over there, right? And then he came over here to the UFC. He can, he has talked about in length about the difference between being in the Bellator and the, in UFC. He could wear sponsors inside Bellator. However, the amount of eyes that are on you inside of the UFC compared to Bellator is completely different. So no, I can't wear my sponsors inside the ring, but now I have more sponsors who want to work with me and I'm getting paid more by my sponsors now because there's more eyes and more attention that's on me. And this is something that people don't necessarily think about. So yeah, but like during fight week, like you can wear your sponsor, you can wear your stuff. It's just that when you're doing the the stare offs and um, all that stuff, like you have to wear the the brands and stuff and you can't wear it inside of the ring, but the amount of attention and sponsors that you get just from being seen on ESPN all the time, just for being on an elevated platform, in my opinion, and based off of what um, Michael Chandler has said, who took, I believe he took a pay cut, like on his base pay to come to the UFC has said that he's made more mom- more money now coming over to the UFC. So the sponsorship thing, I guess, is more so geared towards um, newer fighters or fighters that are filing in prelims and early stuff. And we do have to think about them because, like, they are – they really are. Like, they're, they're filling up the cards, you know what I mean? And these are the people who are eventually going to be your world champion and your title contenders. Um, so there definitely should be something that – should be done for them. Um, and, and I think that it would be cool if they did allow them to say, Hey, you can have two sponsorships, you know, and, yeah. or, or something, as long as it doesn't compete with our main sponsors, crypto.com and whatever else, you mm-hmm. know, they got going on over there. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, that's an interesting point. Cause I never thought about it like that. Um, obviously we know that the UFC gets more eyes. Um, but I don't know, as a viewer as well, you got to think of that. I like seeing people wearing the different brands and stuff. Like, I don't know why. Like, I, I was looking at John Jones wearing the... um Nike with the Gatorade? Yeah. Like, little... Oh, the bit. Nike was so hard. <laughs> I, was like, Dude, like, I want shorts like that. You know what I mean? And then you could go and sell your own little... I don't know. I, I think it would be cool because every UFC car looks the same. You got the same posters on the on the on the side of the octagon. You know what I mean? Even if you're in a different location at a different venue, it all looks exactly the same. Unless you're talking about that fucking bright yellow 
uh, yeah, not for Brazil. Where yeah. the hell did they do yeah. that? <laughs> I, I hope that they bring that back. One thing that I will say about what I th- why I think they went with the uniforms was because prior to them doing that, the MMA was still seen as like cockfighting. It was still seen as just like hey, a whole bunch of people inside there just beating the crap out of each other. Like this isn't a sport. So I think them moving towards the uniforms was to try to give it a cohesive look of like, okay, you guys, like, we're not just a bunch of wild banshees out here. Like there's this is an actual sport. I think they just try to like give it a cleaner edge and a cleaner look. Um, but I mean, it is cool to, to be able to have fighters express themselves. Like Bryce Mitchell gets to wear his little cam camel shorts. You know, I want Max Holloway to have his Hawaiian shorts. Like they should be able to do like little cool stuff like that. I think. But I think that having it look the same is also important, just because like for the casual people who are at a bar looking up at the UFC. Like it has some type of uniformity that they're used to when they're looking at football and basketball and all the rest of this. Uh, you're taking all the points out. Wow, exactly what I was about to say. Mm. You know, back in the day, I don't like, like um, the sponsors are cool if you're getting paid for that. But me visually looking at it, I didn't. I wasn't a super fan of that because it just looked like throw up on shorts or whatever. Some people have shit all over the place. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it, when it switched over, it's uniform. Now it's a sport. You got this team versus this team, this fighter versus this fighter, and it's a uniform thing. There's no, this guy has more sponsors over here. This guy has more things over here. We're, you're going to wear this stuff, and you're going to wear this stuff. Not too much. But I would like it maybe on the walkout, they can have a little patch or something from whatever, because they're just going to take it off anyway. Mm -hmm. But I do like the uniformity of maybe also... Maybe, like you said, let him max swag out his shorts with something else. Or if you have a little personality, as long as it's still Venom, it'll still be cool. Because then that fighter can sell that on his own thing and maybe get a percentage of that. Who yes. knows? I think for me, um, just real quick, I want to know, will Michael Chandler, because we also have to remember that Michael Chandler is a current UFC employee, so you're not going to throw smoke on your current employee. When he retires or when he leaves the UFC, will he have the same energy? Obviously, we don't know. And then let me ask y'all one quick question before we get out of here. I was thinking about this right now, and I want to hear y'all input. So we know the UFC goes all over the world, does their thing. Which crowd, which country, shall we say, has the best fans, the most intense, most passionate fans? Who do y'all got? Oh. So it's probably probably three. The UK. Oh, just the one? Singular, not plural. Probably. But just hearing on like the, you know, on the crowds. Mm, Probably Mexico. I was going to say, nah, but like off the top, probably the UK. (sighs) But my three was going to be UK, Brazil, Mexico. Yeah, those are going to be. But if I had to, recency bias is really messing with me right now because the Patty card, them two cards last year in yeah. London were insane. Uh, but if I'm going to, if I'm not going to allow myself to be captivated by um, my recency bias, I'm going to go with Brazil mm-hmm. because they consistently are like, we just know what you're going to get from Brazilian crowds. Like you, in your mind, you can see. Jose Aldo running out to the crowd and them going absolutely bonkers. You can hear them all chanting, you're going to die. Like, And the stadium yeah. shakes when they're yes. in there. You can feel this because you know it's yeah. probably pretty cheap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the stadium shakes when it's in there and they're going crazy. I love yeah. it. What about you, Jace? Uh, I guess for me, it's a little bit of a bias as well because I've been fortunate enough to, I've been to Brazil twice. Um, oh, this guy has money. hey don't be put me out there like that um and just watching and catching a soccer game there you just feel the passion Mm -hmm. i've never felt anything like that anywhere else in the world um so i'm gonna go brazil yeah that's a lit where'd you go where'd you go to like a uh, world cup type of vibe no um, i've been there twice it was both after right after uh carnival so rio yeah, man, you know, have a good time, boy, in Brazil. <laughs> so, so a follow-up question then. 
which fan base do you think has the most ravenous fans? Which specific fighter has the craziest fans? Which fighter has the craziest? Which fans? specific only choose one fighter has the craziest fans? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with John Jones fans because they're absolutely delusional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dead. Like was, in the stadium or in the arena? It d- doesn't matter. Like Who in has that? the craziest fans? Be probably McGregor fans. I think could be. I think them. <laughs> them Dagestan. Yeah, them too. Like, they die. You feel Look, me? <laughs> they do. But you know what? You're right. I I, I kind of like lean towards uh what uh what CJ said because them McGregor fans. The Irish nation, they show up and they act out. And when Habib and and uh, Connor fought here at T-Mobile, the fans was over there fighting. Like, people got slept. <laughs> people got slept. I know y'all seen those videos. What about you, Jace? Mm-hmm. Hey, he's stocked in home. I think oh, yeah. stocked in yeah. Nate Diaz. Because listen, right? Diaz people Arnold. love Nate. People love Nate. They know this motherfucker is probably going to lose every fucking time he goes out. And the Nate Diaz army shows up every time. When you hear him show up from the way in to when you hear his walkout, you know, Joe Rogan's always talking about, holy fuck, like they're showing out. Nate Diaz to me, shout out to Stockton, even though, you know, Cali 619, where it's at. Uh, Nate Diaz to me has the craziest fans there is. And what I will say is, when I went to Phoenix, because I went there specifically to see Diaz, I wanted to see him versus Leon. When he walked out, I've never heard a bigger... And, you know, I was just there for the Patty fight. You know, Raul got a bigger pat, uh, pop than Patty did. But when Nate Diaz walked out in Phoenix, Arizona... And it, it felt like the crowd, like it felt like yeah. the 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 Exploded. cheering went hit the top and came yeah. back down. It was insane. Like you could not hear. Like I was like, this can't be real. And that made me be like, you know what? I might want to go to a McGregor fight. Like I never really wanted to, but I want to see what the McGregor c- crowd sound like because yeah. that was insane. So they definitely do show up. And then even at two seventy nine, um, him versus Tony, like that was absolutely insane too. But yeah. Yeah, there's there's some good fandoms like, and I think that's also what's important. Like, you run into like a lot of these fighters um, who do have like they haven't quite built a fan base, and this is something I was talking about with Jace um, as far as Francis and Gandhi. He doesn't have a core fan like he does. I'm sure there are, but there's not like a big like like right now. If I'm Bellator or PFL or one of those other organizations, and I have to choose between who I'm gonna pay Nate Diaz or or Francis Ngannou, I'm going to pay Nate. Now, oh, is oh, Nate God. probably going to win his fight? No. But Nate Diaz fans are going to pay for the pay-per-view, right? More than the Ngannou fans will. And his fans are going to show up. He translates over before Ngannou does. <laughs> is that just because Ngannou fans are in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Ah, they got the stream. They got the stream over there. You know, he's from uh, Cameroon, but you know, you know, you know how them Nigerians get down still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, like what it, but you know, like the, that core fan base, I think, is the one thing that's really hurting Francis. Like, if he was, even if he was Izzy, if he was Izzy, that would really shake the room. If Izzy was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna sign again. I'm gonna go ahead and uh go over Move here and get it here. done. Yeah, his. I'm going to watch Izzy. I'm going to watch Izzy on Bellator or one or PFL. I'm, I got to watch the South Elder. So yeah. having that core fan base. You got to put, put that work in, in on the, on the backside, man. Everybody has a phone and I understand that's extra work you have to do to be posting and having your face. Cause I don't even like doing that stuff, yeah. but I just literally watched Izzy talk to a dude who just tattooed his face on YouTube because I want to see what he's doing. You want right. to get involved with these right. people. You want to yes. build your fan base, like you said. So Lingano yeah. don't have you. Just, people don't want to see you to just knock people out. You have to have something to hold on to to make people want to see you more than just your fight. Yeah. It's not enough. It's not enough to bring the eyes to you. On a quick uh, on a quick side note, Izzy might want to go for the PFL so I have to face that boy Pereira again. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
Hey, mm-hmm. CJ, I think I heard you chuckle over there a little bit. Listen, CJ don't not play not, about no Izzy. Not, not up in this house, bro. I still <laughs> go back and watch that podcast when me and Damien is talking about Izzy losing, and CJ <laughs> doesn't break his face at all. He's just sitting there just... <laughs> I was so pissed off, man. I was hitting the walls and shit like, fuck, man. Because the thing is, like, if he would have just went out there and just got beat the first round, knocked out, I'd be like, cool. But every time it's this close, like with Glover, I'm like, you were gle- or, uh, tomorrow. You were right there. You were right there. Well, no, Glover as well. I mean, holy <laughs> shit. 50 seconds, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. damn, man. But that was yeah. all Glover's yeah. fault, too. Like you were saying, man, you, were, you had positioning a lot in that fight, and you just... Look at me, like I don't fucking fight. <laughs> Who am I to tell him what to do? But you were right there, bro. Yeah. Hopefully he don't do that this Saturday. Yeah, you know, you'll see 283 is coming up. Uh I'm nine times out of ten gonna be live streaming. I think I'm gonna live stream on YouTube. Um, if y'all wanna hop on, what, y'all can let me know. Or or you come like fight party. party. Fight yeah, party. Fight party, reactions, like you know, I'm just gonna be on here just thugging, just talking hey. the whole card. I'm yeah. going to have my bottle. You going to get on? <laughs> yeah, buddy. Okay, cool. Yeah, so if, if Damien or CJ oh, want to hop on, we'll be here. Before you go, guy, did you get your tickets for um one? In, um, in May? For, for DJ. Yeah. I have not. Mm. You going to Colorado? Shit. Yeah, I just bought them yesterday. Oh, you? how much were they? I bought the cheap seats. My show was not- 90, 90 hey. each. I'm not I'm not hating on the cheapies, you know, because okay. you know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to get there early, go down there, sit in the good seats until somebody come, and then, you no, know, yeah, that's, what, that's what we did in San Diego. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or what you do is just, you know, go on Ticketmaster and keep two tickets where you're about to buy without buying them, and that's then just keep do. them in the box. Keep them in the uh, box. Uh, Me and Sky did that in Phoenix. Yeah, so we the t- finesse. Yes. Okay. Hey. Uh-huh. <laughs> that that pole pimping, you know. So you just hold on to them. <laughs> yeah, yes. you just keep refreshing it, and then like nobody would come. So what we messed up was the last two fights because it was Rose and and um and Charles Oliveira. So we was like, oh, mm-hmm. ain't nobody gonna come for these last two fights. I promise you, I stopped, <laughs> and instantly somebody came. I was like, uh, what are y'all even doing here? Like, why are y'all coming for the last fight? And then Rose fight was just terrible. So that was like a whole another. Um, what's the date again? May fifth. May fifth is the fight day, but that's he's the only one that's on the card. Him and um, what's his yeah. name, Rice? He's the only yeah. one that's on the card. So we're they probably gonna have a whole bunch of bum under it, but <laughs> fuck it. Let me Damn see. It, you, I... you mess with one FC? Yeah, I watch it every now and again, especially yeah, like, I... the fighters that I do know. <laughs> yeah, because I know you do Muay Thai. I don't know if you watch the last the last um. No, the last the Muay Thai fights was oof. But I began there was some like, bangers. Like like uh, DJ and Raw Tang and them. Like <laughs> man, Raw Tang is that guy. <laughs> Raw Tang is that dude, bro. I cannot wait for the open weight Grand Prix. You know Raw Tang gonna be in there. Cannot man, wait. He's what like five three, five something, but a tank, man. He a is a tank. dog. A little tank. You have you seen uh Sanchai fight? Yes. Bruh. That talk about the most like technical fighter you could fucking find. Like <laughs> he'd be in there playing with people. Like I, I'm mm-hmm. a... pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rob Tang fight last Friday, bro. He dog walked the Chinese guy, man. It was so bad. He's so damn good, bro. Mm-hmm. That's it was why so was good against DJ. We was like, oh shit. But you know they had to they had to change the rules. <laughs> but I love that about One FC. Hey, like, that's they so just, fire. They, they they keep you guessing. They keep you intrigued. You yeah. know what I mean? They'll have straight Muay Thai. Me and Sky talk about this all the time. As far as like you know more pe- like Darren Till. You know he used to be a mixed martial arts fighter. Now he can't keep Dupree from taking him down. Go to go over there. You do some some Muay Thai. See, yeah, but the thing that you, you're, you 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 say that, and I was like, nah, he gonna go over there and get abused by those dudes doing Muay Thai. That striking is that, that's elite amazing. of the elite. <laughs> it's yeah. Well, maybe yeah. Well, go over there so we can watch that. Go over there. And get well, 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 <laughs> well, he was he was um an England uh, kickboxing champion. Yeah, that ain't going so, to over there. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying it's elite of the elite, but I'm saying like 
that is his base. Yeah, his base gonna get based the hell out of there because <laughs> them dudes gonna wear his ass out. <laughs> that striking is it's beautiful, man. I love it. I'm trying to get more people to get on one. <laughs> they on need one. to. Oh, yeah, man. it's on Jason, Fridays. Jason and I was talking, and and I was like, you know, out of all the different uh, organizations that I like, <sighs> really, because that I want to start like watching more often. Like, I definitely want to start watching one. Because mm-hmm. of the different, um, because of the different disciplines that they have and the way that they can mix stuff up, like I find it extremely intriguing, um, pr- and probably I, I I think I will start watching PFL, like because I'm not interested in their seasons. I like their smart cage. I like the you know the ref glasses and stuff like that. I think that'll be cool. Um, so I'm I'm gonna make more of an effort now, like to watch it, um, and just get familiar with the people because like my thing is, and it, I, it might not be like this for everybody, but like for me, it's like. I I need a fighter to get behind. Like I just need that one yeah. person, like that one person to get behind. And it's like, okay, like then I start learning everybody else. You know, obviously DJ's there. So it's easy to get behind DJ because we know DJ. Like we seen him. I was there when he suplexed Ray Borg into an arm bar. Like that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, I definitely one is one to keep out with. And now they're gonna be coming here to uh to the US. I'm gonna look. And I'm looking at these tickets and shoot, they they doing pretty well. They almost is sold. Yeah, they they went on sale the day the fight went on, but like I was like uh, like you were saying about the different disciplines. If you're mm-hmm. into a certain thing, if you're a, a jujitsu guy, hey man, hey look, they have grappling for you. If you're a Muay Thai right. guy, hey look, there you go. There's nothing but striking. And then the girls get in there. Um, who I just put on a stamp. Her fight hey, was a day. Oh my god, they was in there, and they them girls was they were like 19 years old throwing. Crazy ass hands. Don't right. we all love girls that can bang? It's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Yo. <I hate> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so how does you know I watch PFL whenever it is on mm-hmm. and I do catch it. I'm like, I'm not even on front and be like, I'm the biggest PFL dude. If if I see it on, I'll be like, oh shit, I'm gonna watch it. How how is the seasons and how does that thing go? I don't even like know it like yeah, I don't know. So, is it a champion every different season, like like the NBA or NFL? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so you're competing for that season, and then like they have like that like back the day after Thanksgiving, they had all the champions fight on one card, all six cards. I mean, all six uh, champions went up, and then you know you get the win plus you win the million dollars. Um, and it's not actually a million dollars. It's like say like in your semifinal, whatever you're contracted for, they like whatever you won, they like pay you on top of that like so like say like if you made five hundred thousand in the semifinals then you'll get a five you'll get a million dollar check but you'll only get paid out the additional uh five hundred thousand but i mean you know it's interesting i like to watch it because i started actually really started watching it because clarissa shields the hate the hate the hate from what the other girl fighter oh kayla Kayla. I do not hate Kayla. I just hate the fact that like you can't keep telling me that you're the best in the world and you ain't fought like you haven't even fought. Stop. But all you talk yes. about is self-promotion. That's what she's doing. She's hyping herself up. And I'm the works. best. It works. She's making Why? her name. We're talking about making her because, name. Correct. Now she Correct. definitely cuts promo. She's definitely about getting her face out there and talking smack. And hey, it works because she is the face of that promotion, mm. right? So absolutely, whether people love you or hate you, it doesn't <laughs> matter as long as they're talking about you. And here we are. We're talking about her. But I really mm. want to see Clarissa because she's the only uh, boxer that has the quote unquote balls to come over yeah. and compete. In she anything. a real one. Yeah. yeah. See, that's a real one right there. Yeah. yeah. For real. You right, huh? Because none of the boxers is trying to step in none of those cages. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jack Paul about to, real. to make the step. But I guarantee you they're going to feed him a nobody. <laughs> oh, no. I think he's, he, I, I don't think so. I think he'll fight someone that we know. Who? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Here's the thing. I think that he is going to 100% what he's trying to do and been trying to do is get uh, someone to do a boxing and then run it back to MMA, like and he's That's going to do smart. that with That's a name. Super smart. Mm-hmm. Okay, I guarantee you he ain't gonna fight no light heavyweight. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna throw Anthony Pettis in there. 
someone someone is going <laughs> someone is going to weigh 185 pounds that night they won't normally weigh 185 pounds that's for sure i'm a hey, big facts damien big facts that's wild if you fight pettis <laughs> hey pettis over there getting paid in pfl he don't care he getting paid to lose he don't care that's what i'm saying get the bag man <laughs> fuck it yeah, so that's it ufc 283 um Check us out on YouTube. We're going to be live streaming uh, the, the fights when they on. Get our instant reactions. But we scrap and roll. We are out of here. Peace.